Welcome, everyone, to the 3 POA Podcast, Episode 7. I am your host, Laser Pants, and I am joined, as always, by my friends, Tony Roberts. How you doing, guys? Nice to see everyone in the chat. Always good to see uh, Ryan, fresh from the barbers. <laughs> I, I did go to the barber. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. How's it look? It's always fabulous, Ryan. It's All always right. fabulous. That's what I like to and hear. It's also good to see Bobby when he needs to go to the barber. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. my other friend, yeah. Bobby Valla. What's up, man? What's up, gang? I dig that T-shirt. I like that. Uh, what is it, like an army green? Look at that. I like how I'm the only one that wears their T-shirt for the streams. I don't have one, bro. I'm, oh, I'm not wearing mine. Oops. I mean, we got a lot of branding going on. I want to <laughs> I want to like oversaturate it. People are going to be tired of this red logo. I can't get one shipped from America. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll get one to you. I should have done that. Dang it. I, 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 I can just do it locally. You just go to a, a, a different place like, rather than my own store and just put the image on a T-shirt and just get one ordered or two ordered, whatever. So. Oh, yeah. It, it would be better if you did that. I don't want to yeah. send a box to you. <laughs> so <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I did actually send a box to you last week. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it's at my um, my US mail forwarding address, along with the uh, very kind gift that Dante announced on the show last week. So I'm going to get them both packaged up and sent off tomorrow. Cool, cool. All right. Well, tonight we're going to dive deep into play sets of the 80s and 90s. Um, I had one play set as a kid. I was, uh, you know, I, I was raised in a family that we, we didn't have a lot of money, so... When I got the one place that I had, it was a really big deal. What about you, Tony? Were you um, were you play set heavy in your toy collection as a kid? Yeah, re relatively. Um, you know, I I didn't come from a wealthy family, but my parents did did work hard. And you know, the way they used to sell toy lines in the eighties was. You know, everything had to be at certain different price points. So like a three and three quarter inch scale action figure line was designed so that the figures could be affordable at a pocket money price. So you could get maybe one figure a week if you had pocket money or you made someone's lawn. Uh, then the vehicles would be, you know, kind of like a birthday present. And then if your parents could afford it, the playset would be the big Christmas present. So, um, but saying that, there was a lot I wanted when I was a kid. Actually, the only one I can really remember owning is Castle Grayskull. I don't actually think I owned a lot of big play sets. Everyone um, had Castle Grayskull, except me. But, like, every <laughs> kid I knew had a Castle Grayskull. What about you, Bobby? Um, my, my parents, they, you know, they were – we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And I had, you know, three older brothers. So, you know, they kind of – Toys were kind of split between all of us. So, like, when we got Castle Grayskull, it was kind of, like, for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, but we did we did get play sets every now and then. Um, so it wasn't until, like, the early 90s where I, I had more play sets. But I think in the in the 80s, uh, it, was, it was kind of light. Like I said, we had 
we had Castle Grayskull. My, I remember my brother getting, um, what was Hordak's uh, Fright? Was it the Fright Zone? Yeah. I remember he got that for Christmas one year. Um, but, if, you know, that was kind of it. I remember, you know, we didn't have the, the G.I. Joe play sets. I pulled the Terradrome out of someone's trash. But that wasn't until, like, you know, the mid-90s. So, you know, but we didn't we didn't have any of the big stuff growing up. Yeah. Um, uh, now that I think about it, I actually had two. I had a hand-me-down for my older brother who had the GoBot Command Center, which is kind of like a playset vehicle. It was basically yeah. like the GoBot's Imperial Walker, right? You remember that thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I have uh, – Let's. See. yeah, let me share this. There we go. So I think probably the most prolific Star Wars playset of all time right here, the Death Star Space Station. I never had this. This was like a thing of legend when I was a kid. I didn't know anyone that had it. No one in England had it because we didn't get it. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, you guys, you we guys had the Palatoy had one. The Palatoy one, which was far superior. Was yeah, it really? even though it's made of cardboard, it's better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't know anyone that had this either. How was the Palatoy cardboard set better than this? Because it was half a half a sphere, like it was like mm. a Death Star, whereas this was like a tower. You yeah. know, um, it was. This one was always weird to me. I was like, "That's the Death Star," but you know, but Star Wars always did that with their place. Let's look at the. Um, uh, the Star Destroyer. The Star Destroyer is just like a little compartment. There's nothing really yeah. about it that screams Star Destroyer except like Darth Vader's meditation chamber. Um, so like some of their big stuff they they took liberties with, which was fine, I guess, you know, but something about when I first saw that that Palatoy Death Star, I saw it in like a, a Star Wars Galaxy magazine or something like that in the early 90s. And I was like, man, that thing is awesome just because it had so many areas to play. And it was, it was a, a half a sphere. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing that and not being impressed just because it was cardboard. But th this thing to me, like with the play features, the separate levels, the garbage compactor, although they were really small and they weren't exactly movie accurate, the playability for a kid to me looked like it would have been amazing. Ryan, you're such a snob. How dare you? I know. <laughs> How dare you? No one get those cardboard playsets out of here. That's kind of like all they make now. Well, we'll get hey man, that. there's cardboard in this as well. True. Yeah, there that is. whole that whole side panel is cardboard. Yep, there's two there's two cardboard panels there. So, what what's really interesting with this to me is that this came out the year before we got a Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kenner had obviously decided that it was more important to have a playset with a TIE fighter and an X-Wing that could attack it than have um, the Millennium Falcon, which I would also argue is more of a playset than a vehicle. You know, I used yeah. to set my Millennium Falcon on the ground, on its on its legs, take that back hatch off, and that was kind of like the playset. Mm -hmm. And when my figures would travel around, it would be in the X-Wing or the, of the TIE fighter or whatever. So, yeah, for that... That Millennium Falcon was pretty big, and it was kind of cumbersome to fly around your room. I mean, you could. That front landing gear, you could kind of pop down and hold it like a handle and then rest the Falcon on your arm and kind of fly it around. Yeah. But it was really large. Um, I would almost consider that a playset, too. Uh, let's get to some Super Chats real quick. First up, Sal Vader. Thank you, man. He said, stuck at work during a blizzard, just showing my love. You guys are getting yeah. Just I was outside Pounded showroom over. for a few hours. It was bad, man. It's bad. About how much? All right. Hopefully, you don't lose power. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. I mean, it, it's kind of the snow has kind of stopped now. It was really windy uh, during the day today. I think we got it. We got about fifteen inches at least. Um, it was pretty deep out there. Hmm. Well, Sal, be safe. Thank you for the super chat. Thanks, Sal. Uh, M Vargo 97. Thank you very much. He says, first time being able to catch a, a show live since episode three. My favorite playset was the 92 Joe headquarters. Granted, it was really the only large set I had. 
What was the 92 one? That one, it was like like a, a it was kind of like a tower. It had a big Gatling gun. It had like a barrier in the front. There were, it wasn't as like compelling as their earlier stuff. It was it came at a time where 92, you know, things were kind of dying down for Joe and you know, that place that wasn't really iconic. I don't remember it being in any of the shows. Um, you know, it was cool, but it, it, it didn't have the impact as some of the, the earlier ones did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, M. Vargo. And then we got one from Matt Cropsey. Palatoid Death Star or Kenner Death Star? I, <laughs> I had neither, but I... I, I, I thinking from a... He's asking which we prefer, point, and you... You've already showed you shown your cards here, right? Yeah, yeah. Just from a you know a playability standpoint, I Kenner. From a playability standpoint, Palatoy. I'm I'm Palatoy strong all day, baby. Hmm. I yep. don't know if you've ever both been wrong at the same time, on the, at least on this show. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. <laughs> Look, Bob, Bobby's Palatoy. You know, the, this this is why Action Force is better than GI Joe. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. And uh, that is it for Super Chats. So you mentioned, let's see here, we got I don't know what's going on here. My computer screwed up. Uh, you, mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that um, Castle Grayskull. Was yeah. that your, was that like your first play set and what are some of your memories of it? How did you acquire it? Was it a gift? Did you save your lawn mowing money or? Uh, Castle Great Skull for me was a, was a Christmas gift. Um, it's one of the best photos from childhood I've got of, of me with a toy. There's me, you know, just after assembling Castle Great Skull, kneeling down behind it. Um, and I think I've got Faker in the, in the turret. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a Christmas gift. I'm probably saying that would be like, 1983 or 84 um, would, would be when I got that. I did have other play sets, but smaller ones, like for Action Force International Heroes, I had, you know, the Cobra Bunker and Checkpoint Alpha and, and things like that. Um, yeah. But this, this was just the coolest thing, man. It was when this – I think in England we got Masters of the Universe a year after the States – um so when this was coming out we kind of got the cartoon at the same time um and i just remember every kid in my school wanted this for christmas and there is a young desert rat in brown pajamas a blue and red dressing gown <laughs> i think i've got a pair of slippers on that match the color of that uh armchair behind me <laughs> okay so for us Yankees, what what do you mean? Is a dressing gown like a robe, like a bathrobe? It's a robe. Yeah, it's yeah. a robe. Gotcha. <laughs> it sounds like something else, but okay. Yeah, there's little Tony with his. That thing looks huge. You must have been a short kid or something, huh? I think I'm kneeling. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not standing. <laughs> I'm, I'm kneeling. <laughs> it did have some cool features. The uh, it had like a working elevator and. Trap door. That trap door, man. I just loved that trap door. Um, and I'm I'm pretty sure I ended up breaking a part of mine. I don't remember which part it was to do with the trap door. So it was either like the latch that held it up or the little peg in the bottom of the, the throne when, when you turned it that activated it. Maybe I snapped the peg off or something. Um but I I, I played the hell out of that and it Man, this has this has been a Cobra Castle in my childhood as well. Um, we're gonna have like Cobra Vipers where Faker is, and the Joes are gonna try and infiltrate Snake Eyes with parachute in, and just kill everyone. Oh yeah, there would be a lot of crossover with this thing. You could pull out your Dungeons and Dragons toys with this, or even like to a certain extent, Kenner Star Wars. You know, you could have this sub as like Jabba's palace or something. It's a pretty cool place. Yeah. It has like the, it's just a sticker, right? But it's like that pit of monsters. What's that called? The uh, Just the dungeon thing on the on the bottom, the, yeah. Yeah, I know. I think Super 7 did a 3D version of that, like a sculpted version of that. And 
in their um, like five hundred dollar Castle Gray Skull a few years yeah. ago. Um, Bobby, how about you? Your first what? play set. What was it like? What'd you get? What was the experience? We had, like I said, we had Castle Gray Skull as kids, but I don't really remember it. I was really young when we had it. Um, the first place that I could remember was probably the 89 Toy Biz Batman Batcave, which was just at the tail end of the 80s, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but yeah, that was that was my first one. I, I ended up getting like G.I. Joe ones and 80s ones like later in life and, you know, in the, the mid, mid to late 90s and then my 20s. But as far as like one I got like, right off the bat was was definitely that that 89 back cave which was one of the Sorry, best places i've ever made um for its time you know it's like it didn't have a lot of features but i wasn't a big feature uh heavy kid i i had an imagination and i created my own play so to me this was perfect because it gave me a layout for me to just have all the action i wanted um, you know, and the fact that you can kind of have it double as two different scenes from the back and the front, you know, that, that thing offered everything. I love this play set. This was my first. And besides that GoBot command center, like only play set as a kid. And I absolutely love this thing. My, I remember my cousin had the Kenner bat cave that came out a few years later and that was pretty cool, but I always preferred this one. The Kenner one had Wayne's Manor. So the back here, I couldn't find a good picture, but this had a, a sliding elevator up to this yep. platform. I I believe this platform would fall. Yep. It had like a like a trap door kind of feature. And there was right here, there was a sliding um, a jail, jail door. Yeah. Yeah. So you could like, and then this was like the vault where you would remove villains. And it said on the box, I remember this. I, I had the box in my lap driving home from Toys R Us. And it said this was the access door to remove villains from the bottomless pit. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember as a kid, I was like eight, maybe nine years old when I got this thing. And I was thinking, if the pit is bottomless, how does anyone ever come out of it? <laughs> Yeah, like I don't, I don't know who wrote the script on that over at Toy Biz, but they should have thought that through a little better. Ryan saw um, right through all their marketing. I did. I, I wasn't buying it, <laughs> but again, the back of this thing, cardboard, mm -hmm. lots of cardboard. I actually, I reacquired this about a year ago. It's not complete. I'm missing some pieces, but I, I want to build it up because I, I love this thing as a kid. And if you, if you Google it, there's this whole community around customizing this thing. People paint them up to make them look realistic. Mm -hmm. And you could almost fudge in like a six inch figure with it because the Toy Biz figures were like superpower scale about five inches. Five inches, yeah. 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 And there's the box right there. So here it is, right here on the back of the box hinge door to retrieve figures from the bottomless pit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was hilarious. This button up here would, would drop the door. To the uh, jail cell. And, in the, in the and, comics, has, has Batman ever had a bottomless pit in his Batcave? Of course not. No. <laughs> no. Toy Biz was. Uh, I don't know. They were. They were a brand new company at that point. I think Toy Biz started in the very late eighties. Yeah. By yeah. Um, the guy that headed Marvel for a long time, Ike Perlmutter. Ike Perlmutter started Toy Biz. Um, we got a few super chats here. Jeremy Jernigan, thank you very much, man. He said, my favorite playset of all time was the Karate Kid Dojo. Castle Grayskull was an extremely close second. I don't yeah. remember that at all. Yeah, the Karate Kid line, that was a, a very underrated line. And I, I know that dojo goes for big money nowadays just because it was rare and there's a lot of pieces to it. Yeah, that was a pretty obscure line. Um, a world made of cardboard. Thank you. He says, my wife's grandmother had that chair. Tony's Christmas picture. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> um, yeah, the, those chairs in the eighties, man, like the floral print or the, 
the pinstripe. Oh. Those things were friggin' ugly. Like what? What was going on? Well, really, they were left over from the seventies. My parents yeah. had like these these blood red chairs with like a floral print, print and yeah, hideous. Um, and then we got one from Gerard O'Connor. Thank you. He says, "Hey, chaps, Thanks. and hello, chat. Can't stay as it's date night. Just wanted to show the respect you dudes deserve." Thank, Thank you. you, man. Thanks, Gerard from the UK. It looks like. I uh, appreciate that. And then Matt Cropsey, thank you. He says, Simpsons, World of Springfield sets were my favorite growing up. Who made those? Uh, Playmates. Yeah. Oh, were, were those coming out when I was an adult? That was late 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. Okay, so I was already out by then as far as collecting toys that weren't star wars and we are caught up on super chats okay so um we got more that i want to talk about here i wish my computer was agreeing with me but it's not um bobby didn't you say you had this kenner playset i did so I the first issue of the, of this playset they did it like four or five times. I had the original one for Batman Returns, um, you know. So it was like eighty nine Batman was huge for me, and I was just such a big Batman fan. And I remember, um, I wanted this playset, and you know, my brother like knew I wanted this playset. And I think at the time, like this thing was expensive. This thing was like seventy five dollars. It was really expensive, and. Um, you know, my dad was like, we just, you know, we can't get it. We don't, you know, either we didn't have the money or it wasn't like anywhere around like my birthday or Christmas or anything. But, um, my brother knew that I wanted this playset really bad. And I think, you know, he said he, he wanted it too, but I think he really kind of did it for me, but he was like, Hey, we should have a garage sale and like get the money and, and buy this. And we ended up like just. For like two or three days, we had a garage sale like outside our house, but we just like took stuff from around the house, like my parents' stuff, like books and things like that. <laughs> and we, we just started like selling just anything. And I want to say we raised like, I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks. And, you know, my dad, I remember my dad took us to Toys R Us at night one night and the playset was there. And I think he kind of covered the rest, you know, the rest of the cost, but uh, you know, my brother never played with this place at a day in his life, but I had it and man, this thing was awesome. I remember, I can remember how I had it set up in our, in our house in the basement. My dad had like this huge like workbench area and I kind of took over like half of it as like my, my setup area. And I had this set up so that it was like an L and, um, I had a, a really cool like Playmobil medieval table with like all like shiny glasses and plates and, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a candle holder and this like that. And that was set up like inside Wayne Manor. Um, you know, so Wayne Manor actually looked like, uh, you know, like a, like a real area. And then I had the back cave area all set up. And then I had this area that had all the Batman figures lined up. Like it was his armory. Like he could pick nice. different costumes. And then on the other side was where you play with like the, you know, the, the toxic waste plant. Um, so man, this, this play set was awesome. Like it took everything about the toy biz one and it like put it on steroids and it was like, we're just going to come out with something way cooler. And the fact that, you know, you had three different settings, it had the spinning, you know, uh, armor, uh, area, you know, the, the Batmobile could go through that door, you know, yeah. it had the computer station like dude this thing was awesome man uh it, in the in wayne manor it had the 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 skylights that you can you can break open this thing was so cool um this was this was it man this was like the play set to have yeah my cousin had this one and i had the toy biz and i remember as a kid i always liked mine better but just looking back objectively i think this one is far superior yeah just because of what you get. I mean, the Wayne Manor in the front, you get the spinning armory there. Mm -hmm. You could put a, you could put this Bruce Wayne in, spin it, and the, you know, there's the bat suit or whatever. Um, that was a, that was a really beautiful story, Bobby. 
Mm-hmm. Thanks, man. I gotta so, tell my brother. I gotta tell my brother about that one because it's like it was always <laughs> kind of meaningful to me because I knew he didn't really want this playset, but he, you know, it was like the one thing yeah. my brother like realized how bad I wanted it. That's cool. It, well, it always that, felt that, better. You, you stole your dad's shit and sold it, <laughs> and you still right? pay for the rest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my brother hated me, so that definitely never happened uh, in the uh, in the Laser Pants household. Um, well, my, but yeah, they, my brother, my brother was six years older, so there's, there's pretty decent gap age gap when you're a kid. Yeah, um, same here. So he's the he's the reason that I was growing up in the early '80s, and I had stuff like Evil Can Evil and the Six Million Dollar Man and mm-hmm. some old Action Man figures. Um, that's why my interest in collecting today go beyond my own childhood, you know, further back. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but like Bobby said, they released it several times. This is the animated version. Yeah, they uh, did it for they did it for Batman Returns. I think they brought it back for like Batman Forever and um, and maybe Batman and Robin, or they skipped Batman Forever and brought it back out for Batman no, and Robin. They did it for every movie. They did it for every movie, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they did it for yeah, like Batman the animated series. Like, dude, this thing came out so many times. Good for them for like getting good use out of that tooling because yep. you know, shoot man, this thing probably made so much money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if they brought this out again today and, and it was available at retail, I'd buy one. Right. Yeah. So which one of you were lucky enough to have castle gray skull and snake mountain? Not me. So I, I've, I had a, a younger cousin who was really into Masters of the Universe as well. And because I would spend a lot of time with him, like some weekends I would go over and that, that family would look after me and then other times he would come to, to my house. So when it came to Christmas presents, my parents would actually talk to my cousin's parents and never get us the same thing, which is why like, I really wanted – the transportable tactical battle platform from G.I. Joe. Well, he got that and I got the Cobra Hydra foil because they didn't want to get us the same thing. And they, you know, the two were kind of designed to play together. So because I had Castle Grayskull, he got Snake Mountain, but I got to play with it a lot. And this is a pretty crummy play set, I've got to say. Really? I'm not a fan of Snake Mountain. No. It do- it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. There's so here you've got all the figures inside. There's nothing to do on the inside. Yeah, it, it's, it's all out, out the front, and you could you couldn't get the figures to stand on it properly or anything like that. I mean, at the end of the day, though, there really wasn't much for features in Castle Grayskull. Like you had the 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 elevator, and you had the uh, the trap door. Other than that, there wasn't really much to it. I thought Snake Man was cool. Man, it had that megaphone that you that you talked into. I think it was awesome. Yeah, but my parents were, were too poor to ever buy us batteries. Like one, that, that battery got <laughs> ran to death on Christmas Day, and then the rest of the time you've just got this big wolf-headed dildo in your playset. I, like, I, I think it was one of those like nine-volt batteries too. Yeah, yeah, yeah one of the ones you stick on the end of your tongue. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, lick this. Let me know if the battery's still good. Okay, and then you lick it. And <laughs> get shocked. My brother did that to me all the time. He hated me. I said that earlier. Uh, before yeah. we get too far ahead, Jeff McElway sent a super chat. Thank you. He says, my only takeaway from the animated series Batcave is that they made a great ghost action figure. Also, sup guys? Bobby's Bobby, Bobby figures kick ass. Got mine. Thanks, man. Thanks, Jeff. Um, did they make a gray ghost? I don't remember I think, that. I, I think later on, I know that the the DC uh, collectibles line mm-hmm. from a few, you know, last couple of years did a, a gray ghost, but I think they put him in the the animated line, like towards the end, like when they were doing uh, Mask of the Phantasm, when they were doing like obscure stuff. Then, gotcha. Um, yeah, this thing is all messed up. So. I can't wait to see what, what kind of un, uh, you know, un, you know, wanted pictures we see from Ryan. I know, right? Hey, I don't know what's going on. 
I need, <laughs> I need like I need slideshow software. Um, Endless Bullets, thank you very much. He says, just showing my boys some love. Great topic. Thank you, Endless Bullets. Thanks. Thank you. I, I just want to give a shout out to End Endless Bullets. So that is Matt Swafford's new podcast where he's um, bringing on a different guest for each show to talk about classic action movies. Um, the first episode, which I think dropped about two weeks ago, him and Michael talked about Roadhouse. Um, I actually spent two hours recording an episode with Matt before doing this, um, where we're talking about the 1980 Flash Gordon movie, which is better than Conan the Destroyer. So, <laughs> All right. I'm not going to address that. I want to say, Matt, congrats on the new podcast. <laughs> Perfect name for, for the genre. If you ever do an episode on Commando, I'd love to be on because if there's any movie that has endless bullets and no magazine changes, it's Commando. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. It's the first time I saw a hatchet go into a dude's head. <laughs> or or a saw blade. Great movie. Um, and Tony, fuck you, Destroyer's better. <laughs> Flash Gordon? Then everything. Then everything. Except Roadhouse. Except Roadhouse Roadhouse is better than everything. Roadhouse. Better than, right, the, better than the upcoming Action Force movie? Yep. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> wow. Wow. Unless, unless we can get someone in the Action Force movie to say, grab him, take him, then, it, you know, then it'll be better. <laughs> well, thank you, Endless Bullets. I got to check that podcast out. And I hope they liked Roadhouse, by the way. Love that movie. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a really good podcast. Yeah, him, him and Michael, brilliant. I'll definitely check it out. Uh, a World Made of Cardboard, thank you very much. He says, has there been some type of Batcave released every year since 89? Pro every year? Probably not, but oh, every, every other year. year. Listen, man, what the way Imaginex puts out like play sets, they've been covering the last 10 years. Dude. So I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, every... Like, so my kid is into Imaginex. Not so much now. He's getting a little bit older. But every time we went to, the, you know, Target, Walmart, or even Toys R Us, there was, like, a new, better version of an Imaginex Batcave there. And yeah. I'm like, man, these are awesome. But we're going to get to the modern stuff in a minute. Did, um, did I ever tell you guys about my, my Imaginex uh, Lazarus Pit concept that almost got made? No. Oh. All right. I'm, I'm going to segue. I'm going to tell you a real quick story. Okay. So when I was uh, going to FIT for my toy design degree, my teacher, who I really liked, he was really talented, he was the design manager of the Imaginex line at Fisher Price. And I was like, dude, I love, like, if I can work on any line, like any kid line ever, it would be Imaginex. I think what they do is fantastic. And for one of my assignments, I did a, a an Imaginex concept and I, I did the Lazarus pit and I had it as like, it was like kind of like two tiered and it was almost very similar to the toy biz bat cave. And it had like the Lazarus pit and you can, you can raise Ra's al Ghul like out of it with a, you know, with a the elevator on the back. And I, I love that assignment. And I remember like I handed it in, he, he came to me like after he saw it and he's like, Hey, listen, would it be okay if like I pitched this at, you know, at, our, our next like concept meeting uh, like to get made. And I was like, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like make this thing. And uh, they didn't end up making it. However, they made something very similar and they made like, I had put Bane and Ra's al Ghul in my concept and they had never done those figures up in, you know, to that time. And I remember like a, a year or two later, I saw the, like a set with Ra's al Ghul and Bane. And they kind of look just like the ones I did, which, you know, it's probably just because that's I, I copied the, the the style. But it was kind of cool. And I was like, oh, man, I wonder if, you know, he was still working on the brand then. But it would have been cool if that Lazarus pick got made because, man, I love designing play sets. That thing would have been so cool. It would have been cool if they included a uh, wrapped up in, in like, mummy papers, uh, Jason Todd. <laughs> that would have been dope. Uh, Imaginex goes deep with their characters too. They man. do. They go real deep, and I yeah. love it. Um, if you, if you love designing play sets, Bobby, when are we getting one for Action Force? <laughs> well, costs are a bit different nowadays, and 
but it, it's something I'd like to do. I'd like to find a way to bring play sets back. Okay. You, know, you remember the really small, the really, really small G.I. Joe ones like the big wax. The wax and the yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can I can picture a lot of a lot of the stuff that comes out today, play set wise, you know, I'm not talking about Imagine X, which is, you know, deliberately aimed at, at children, but for lines like Star Wars, we've really gone away from play sets to more now dioramas, you know, the oh. tentative for hallway and and stuff. Yeah. I'd I'd love to see for, for Action Force like a, a mortar emplacement where it's like sandbags. A, a mortar, all this stuff, yeah. or 50 hour on a truck. Outpost Defender, Checkpoint Alpha. I think I think the way to do play sets is kind of that way and then mm-hmm. make them modular so that they can connect and create something bigger. bigger. Um, you know, play sets are definitely hard nowadays. Um, you know, like you think about it, like the Batcave is iconic. So, you know, Batman needs a Batcave, so that's kind of easy. G.I. Joe had so many iconic play sets from the cartoon. You know, that was easy. Same thing with Thundercats, the, you know, the Cats Lair and, and Voltron and Turtles had the sewer. So it was like the play sets were much easier to do. They were like no brainers. Now it's it's definitely more challenging because it's like, what do you put that tooling cost towards that is going to sell a lot? Like you're not going to get repeat sales just because it's, it's one thing, you know, like the, I guess like the, um, uh, the, the Star Wars hallway, it's like you can get a bunch of them, put them together. So it makes for easy, re, you know, repeat purchases, not like, you know, the best spin set, which is just two stairs to nowhere. But, um, uh, you know, it's but it's it, it's just a matter of what is compelling and what is the right thing to do. Um, plus, you know, like I said, costs costs are so high nowadays, um, you know. And it's it's easy to sell a bat cave because you're going to move, you know, two three hundred thousand units. Whereas nowadays you're not moving that many. You know, I don't think I don't think people are getting that big of stuff. Kids aren't getting that big of stuff. I think the last big playset was the the Playmates Ninja Turtles giant playset from um, you know around like 2012 to like 2014. That one came out. I, yeah, I remember that one. That um, well, we had we did have the Castle Grayskull again for Origins, but that's true. That's true. That but that, it is Castle Grayskull, you know. Yes, yeah. and that that line you can buy that and give it to a kid and they can play with it, and then yeah. an adult. But also, it's like it. I was just at Target the other day, and that thing was on clearance. And I was like, "Well, that's not good," you know. And uh, Mike you know, Kroger had them stacked up on clearance. Yeah. So it's like I can get into a like like my ex- I worked on a playset when I was on the Spider Man line, and I can get into that later. I know we got more playsets to talk about, but that'll give really good insight as to why these companies aren't really doing playsets anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, James Salisbury, thank you very much for the super chat. He says Retro Blasting Tour of Snake Mountain video is great. Yep, He Man Tour of Snake Mountain. It's it's funny, very funny. I'm a, I'm gonna have to revisit that. Thank you, James. Um. All right. So we've got a few more super chats. I think. Okay. Let's get. To, uh, wow. uh, oh, sorry. Got it. Tony Robles. Thank you very much. He says my first playset was the Fisher Price Rescue Heroes Mission Action Command Center. So I don't know if uh, if you guys have seen my my office tour video. And or no, the, the time capsule video that me and Sal did together at from my office, where I go through like all the things that I had as a kid and stuff like that. There was a, a Fisher Price zoo that I had as a kid that before I had the Toy Biz Bat Cave, that doubled as my my Bat Cave. So Tony, I'm I'm all about the Fisher Price place that's man. And you know, you you're actually jarring memories in me. I had another playset as a kid, the Sesame Street playset. Dude, Mr. Hooper's, Mr. Hooper's store, I just bought yes. one, and I have it at the office. I'm going to send you a picture when I'm there on Monday. Yeah. I had it too. Now, granted, it didn't have everything, but yeah, it opened up, and it had the Oscar that you pushed down on the sidewalk, yes. and he popped up. Dude, my my wife, when I got it, I got it in my, the mail uh, about a month or so ago. My wife's like, what'd you buy now? And I'm like, dude, Mr. Hooper's store. Um, you know, And I bought it like complete, and the thing is awesome. 
that thing was like it was a little small, but that mm-hmm. was like my Gotham City. Gotcha. Like I would use it because I, I think I got it for my grandmother. She had bought it for like the grandkids to have at her house, <laughs> but like at some point she just let me take it home, and mm. that was like my Gotham City with my you know Toy Biz Batman Kenner Dark Knight collection. Um. I have no idea what you two are talking about right now. The <laughs> Sesame Street gonna, playset was classic, man. I'm going to send okay. you some pictures. Maybe maybe we'll do like a video call on Monday when I get to the office. Dude, this thing, let me tell you something. Probably in my, my top like 15 all-time playsets is yeah. Sesame Street, Mr. Hooper's store. Yep. Mm-hmm. It, man, I can't believe I forgot about that. Uh, Jeff yeah, I thought about it too, man. Yeah. Jeff McElway, thank you very much. He says, as far as play sets go, take a page from Lego. They made their Hogwarts stuff modular and are raking it in. Little battle sites, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. I think it's it's easy for Lego because they have a building system. That's mm-hmm. what they do. So yes, it's it's, it's almost know. all reused parts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um it, Lego, I I kind of put Lego in a in a category of its own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean well, also, it's a you got to think. Think of how big the tool is for one half of Castle Grayskull. It's enormous. It's a giant piece of steel. Whereas Lego, all the molds are really small. There's no gigantic pieces. They're all small pieces that create big pieces. So it's their their system allows them to save on cost. Yeah, I think uh, I think that like Lego would be a show in a, in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's a great point. Um, and we are caught up on super chats. All right, I I, I want to back up a little bit to the '80s because this was not a place that I was even aware of until I was an adult. I think that speaks to its rarity and the price tag it carries now. Um, Eternia. Oh. So I neither of you guys had Eternia, right? Like no. I don't. I've never seen it in person. I've seen the shell of it in person at toy shows, but never complete, never in box. I guess the tracks are always breaking. They're very delicate because it has like this track system with like a rail car that goes around. Okay. But uh, this thing is the, the prices are crazy. Like whatever kid had, this was like a legend. I wonder what this thing retailed for like at the time. I think it was about the same as the flag. It was like 120 bucks or something. Okay. And compared to uh, Castle Grayskull, which was 30 Like 30 Like $30. Like 30 bucks. yeah. Yeah. So you were either well off or your grandmother liked to spoil you if you had like the flag or Eternia. Um. But I mean, I, there's not much to say I, about I wouldn't this. feel like I was being spoiled if someone gave me this. I think it's hideous. Oh, like really? I, I, when, it's when definitely... you threw this picture up on screen, I threw up on my mouth a little bit. <laughs> it's definitely a bad looking playset. I mean, the massiveness of it is very cool, but it's, you know, it looks like almost like th- the pieces don't go together. It's almost like someone kind of kit bashed it. Like the things on the yeah. side don't look like it goes with the rest of it. So it's a weird one, but you know, this like I said, almost... it, the left side looks like it would attach to Castle Grayskull, and like mm-hmm. the right side looks like it would attach to Snake Mountain. Now they weren't modular; there was no way to like connect them, yeah. but you could set them up that way, right? And like just from a childhood standpoint, having a working like rail car on this track system—that's pretty cool. I don't know what you guys think, but I, I had an electric chain set as a kid, and I loved that thing. I wonder if this was supposed to be a Temple of Doom place at first, and then, you know. Retool. <laughs> um, well, L- LJM were doing Temple of Doom. There is yeah, photos yeah. No, of, a, of a, there is photos of a prototype place that they mm-hmm. made for like the minecart chase sequence, and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's very different to this. Yeah, so that's why I made that joke, because I was like, ah, yeah. that would be kind of funny. All right. And I got to reset this stupid thing again. In your wheelhouse, Bobby. And actually you, Tony. um, Let's get into some Joes. 
Bobby, how did you pull this thing out of the trash? So the listen, Joe Terror Drone. Listen, I remember. So, so I was probably, I think I was eight or nine, and I was, I was a like I was, I was skinny, like I was a small kid, and me and my what friend. What was it like? Were, what was it like? It, it was. I mean, being was, being skinny. I, I, it sucked, man. I got made fun of constantly. <laughs> my brothers beat the shit out of me all the time. It sucked. Um, yeah. I, Bobby, I was real skinny as a kid too, and the kids used to call me Tony Boney. Oh. <laughs> hey, terrible. listen, listen. I don't care what you two say. It's harder being a fat kid. I'm just putting that out there. It's harder. Okay. Continue <laughs> on with your terror story. Huh? So me and my friend, we were riding our bikes. We would ride our bikes all over the neighborhood. And someone was throwing out like a bunch, like cleaning out their house or something like that. And it was just the shell. It had, it had the two turrets, but no seats. And I think it had like three of the doors and it did have the fire bat and maybe one chair. So it was, it was kind of beat up and you know, it was definitely wasn't complete, but Dude, it was a terror drone. And at the time, it's like, I never seen one. I don't even know if it existed. Uh, you know, so I saw it. And I was like, holy crap, we were probably a good half a mile from our, our house. And I remember, like, I had my bike with me, and my friend's like, all right, I'll, I'll walk bo both bikes. And, you know, if you're going to carry that thing. And I remember, like, I struggled. That was, that walk took forever. And I had to keep putting it down and picking it up, keep putting it down. Thing was enormous, but man, I was determined to get that thing home. And I got it home. My dad's like, "What is that?" I'm like, "I pulled it out of the garbage. Someone threw throwing it out." <laughs> I remember just like cleaning it up, and it was like I had a terror drum at that point. So it was like I ended up like getting some really awesome like the the GI Joe playsets that I had. I ended up getting the Defiant later because a friend traded me for some some. Batman stuff and you know so I I the Joe playsets that I had I didn't like get and they weren't complete but I like got them second hand through like really cool means but I'll never forget that that walk with the terror drum um so the terror drum is always going to be important to me if I'd have brought home something like this and told my parents I bought, pulled it out of the trash it would have been an immediate beating and they would have <laughs> yelled at me and said who would you steal it from and they would have beat me again um, <laughs> but yeah, so well, um, they obviously knew you well because I can remember being here on an episode of the three POA when your cousin was in the chat and you yes. admitted to having sticky fingers when you were a kid. I did. I, I, I stole a handful of GI Joe figures from him. I was like probably seven years old. Yeah. Mm. I was a bad kid. <laughs> All right. This thing was an urban legend when I was a kid. Like even yeah, my was, cousin who I stole from, my my cousin who I stole from, he had like everything. He didn't have this, and they told me about this thing, and I was like, "No way! They never made it some massive aircraft carrier." I don't believe you. And then later on, when I actually found out it was freaking real, mind blown. Like, yeah, Bobby, you have one, right? I have one. I, at one point, I had three. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Alex, Alec, the one Alex has was my second complete one. And then I had one that was like 80% complete that I ended up selling. Um, but yeah. uh, the one that I have is very, I can't say why it's so special, but it's very special. One day I'll say why it's special. But yeah, it's like I had never seen Me one. Geez. You know, I, I didn't know they existed. I vaguely remember like me and Alex when we were in art school together, like losing a bet to him. Because I said this thing didn't exist. Like, I didn't believe the flag existed. Um, I thought it was just, like, some fake thing, some urban urban legend. And then it's like, look, this thing actually exists. What is so this, wasn't sold, this wasn't sold in the UK, but there were a few, um, like, big Toys R Us stores who got one for the store just to set up, like, a display in there. Um, and I, go, I don't remember what, what the story – most likely it was probably Harrods in London. Um, I'd heard, you know, it was an urban legend. And even though they didn't sell it in the UK, I saw it in the shop window one time just as a d display piece and was just like, it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen in my life. 
It's got to be the biggest place out of all time. It's like six feet long. Yeah. 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 Seven it's feet almost long. seven, I think. Seven. It has yeah. a working uh, PA system in it. Yep. Yeah, the one that I have um, had like the wires corroded in it. So I remember taking it into into work when I was at Hasbro to my electronics engineer. And I said, hey, can you can you resolder these wires and make it work? And he made, he made it work. So that works perfect. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, Alex was when I was in New York staying with Alex. He was um he was working on the that flag. Oh, was he? Yeah, he has a giant table for it. It's gonna be awesome when he has it all complete and set. Yeah, my mine has a really cool display. Like I the the Joburg guys they they showed a tutorial on how to do the uh the hull. You know, mm -hmm. it's like mine has a custom hull that raises it up, like you know, like eight or ten inches, and I can fit all of my like I have um. The, the Night Force whale, I have the regular whale. Um, it could fit uh, a bunch of other vehicles underneath it. And then I have LED lights that go along the inside. There's a map room and stuff like that. So it, I made it really, really cool. That's awesome. Um, so when I discovered this thing was actually real, we, we used to go to Eastern Washington as, as when I was a kid for vacation. So Washington is like on the west side of the mountains. It's all green, right? Like almost like a rainforest. East side of the mountains is like where Tony lives. It's a desert. So we would go to the desert for like, we go to the lake, right? Boating, swimming, all that stuff, fishing. And there was a store in Spokane, Washington called the White Elephant. And they had a flag suspended from the ceiling. And they had it for years. I mean, they had it until they closed down like two years ago. And I remember going in there and seeing that. And I was like, oh my God, it's real. Like Hasbro actually made this giant aircraft carrier. Everyone asked them, will you sell it? Will you sell it? And this is, you know, this is when the flag had gone up in price. What it sells for like a thousand bucks now complete, right? Mm -hmm. They would not sell it. They shut down a few years ago and they sold everything. And I'm like, man, I wish I could have made it over there. Cause that's like a six hour drive for me. But, um, man, I would have loved to have this thing. They sell for about a thousand dollars now. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, isn't it more than that now? I can't, they were selling for a thousand dollars complete a few years ago. Okay, I think, I think it's one of those things where they're so big, so not it's not an in demand thing because not everyone has the room for it. So I don't think the price has gone up. Say like it does on like a whale. Um, you know, there there are pieces like the the fanta the the fantail rail uh, on on this. The you know the PA they're always going to yeah. be rare and expensive pieces, but as far as like a complete one, like I said, I think that just because of how enormous it is, it's not super super desirable. Yeah, Matthew Henning, uh, just real quick, he says Toy Traders in BC Canada has the craziest flag GI Joe display I've ever seen. So every time I go up north to Canada, I go to Toy Traders. How many do they have, Matthew? They have like six or eight flags in this giant diorama with, you know, sky strikers flying in. They have explosion effects, like a whole mountain scene. It's massive. It's probably like 30 feet long, this display, with all these G.I. Eight Joe's flags? The U.S. I, Navy doesn't even have that many aircraft carriers. <laughs> <right? laughs> yeah, it it is. Like Toy Traders in Vancouver, B.C., if you ever get the chance, you have to go there. It's probably... It's definitely the coolest toy store I've ever been to. It might be the coolest one in the world just because of what they have displayed. It it really is amazing. Um, before we get to this playset, I want to get to a couple Super Chats, or at least one. A World Made of Cardboard, thank you very much. He says, I had a few Star Wars playsets. Most of my playsets out of cardboard. My best bin was huge with landing pads, catwalks, and a basketball court. So they, your playsets were um, handmade. I think it was what you meant to say, right? That, that, that's that's why his name is his name on here is a world made of cardboard. He yeah. still does this. I remember him appearing on. Um, it was on like a, a Patreon live stream somewhere. I think maybe on Retro Blasting, and um, a world made of car. He actually had like a Tie Fighter there on the desk with him that he'd made out of cardboard and stuff like that. Uh, ingenious. 
So yeah, That's he would cool. make his own play sets when he was younger. There, yeah, there's a company called Extreme Sets, and that's what they make. They make cardboard. Not, I wouldn't call them play sets. They're more dioramas, backdrops yeah. for toy photography for your shelf displays. Um, it's a it's a great way to do it, you know, inexpensively. Hey, the the last place that I worked on when I was at Hasbro was cardboard, and it mm-hmm. sold out at Comic Con. Great set. <laughs> nice. Yep. All right, thank you, World Made of Cardboard. So, oh, we got another one from World Made of Cardboard. Thank you. He says, meant to say most of my play sets I made out of cardboard. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the Super Chats. Um, Now, we are caught up on Super Chats. I've never seen Ghostbusters. So, you, you guys have this thing? I know there's, like, the fandom loves this thing. The, the fandom does love it. I never had it. Uh, I didn't have any friends that have it. Um, but it was one of those things where I debated, like, you know, going back and buying some of the old Kenner uh, Ghostbuster stuff. And then I saw Retro Blasting's video on this and how it opened my eyes to the actually the, the terrible nature of this playset. And I was like, oh. uh, I'm not going to get that. Really? Yeah. Because, like, the... The Ecto one can't like fit in it when the the trap system is in there. Um, I think like it can't so- fit in there. It, it, if you want to close the doors, it doesn't fit in. You yeah. got to take the, the seat off the top to get it in there. There's no there's no stairs or ladder to get up to the upper level. It's basically it's designed to pour. Um, what do you call it? It's the slime. slime. It's designed to pour the slime through. Without slime. It doesn't really have any play feature, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I only acquired this probably eighteen months ago for my collection um, because it's still an iconic piece. Like from the outside, from the front, it looks iconic and and, and looks the part. But um, I'm working on another video at the moment about um i've actually got a whole heap of patrons to send in video clips talking about toy lines where they mix mix to match stuff and although i didn't have this when i was a kid if i did i'm telling you right now my action force sas soldiers would be abseiling down the side of this thing like it was the iranian embassy (laughs) that's what i would do with this yeah Um, Yeah. didn't this uh double as the police academy playset also uh yeah i think so i did i think you're right yeah, the the Kenner Police Academy. Man, Kenner wow. love to recycle stuff. Mm-hmm. I want to do a, a video with with retro blasting on everything that Kenner recycled through different lines. Yeah, it it was a lot. I mean, they took Silverhawks mm-hmm. and turned it into vehicles for the Dark Knight collection, like yep. that. Yeah, the I don't remember, but yeah, they took superpower stuff, put it in a Dark Knight collection. Yeah, they were good at that. Um, I just love how, how how Bobby is on Ryan's show on my channel when he says he wants to make that video of retro blasting. <laughs> well, cause, cause Michael and I Michael and I have talked about the because <laughs> because where it happened the greatest was in the Kenner Robin Hood line. And me and me and Michael are big fans of Robin Hood Prince of Thieves and the Kenner Robin Hood line. So he and I were talking about it and we you know, I, I mentioned like we should do a show that talks about everything that Kenner recycled because that whole Robin Hood line was basically just recycled Kenner stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's nothing against you, Tony. Actually it is. It's because you don't like destroyer, but you know, maybe <laughs> if you like destroyer, maybe we'd invite you on the show. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I have never, ever, ever said I don't like destroyer. I just don't agree with your <laughs> idea that it's better than everything else. <laughs> it's listen, it's leagues better than Barbarian. So that's that's the argument right there. Leagues. Is it better than Rambo Three? Man, I love Rambo Three. I, I don't. I understand it's cheesy and stupid, but I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love Rambo Three. Yeah. For, for, for me, that series goes First Blood, Rambo Three, Rambo Four, Rambo Two. And then you can forget about that last one where um, they advertised it as Rambo, but it was actually Jason Voorhees. 
<laughs> yeah, that was that thing was crazy, man. Um, so just to clarify, Clay thirty six thirteen in the chat, he says the police academy station is not the same as this. Oh, it's not. He says it's not. I'll take his word oh. for it. I never even yeah, saw police I'm, academy I'm figures. <laughs> I never even saw police academy figures in the store. I'm only aware of them because of that advertisement book Kenner would put in every toy, right? You remember those things? They would flip in like their their advertisements for all their toys and with like every toy vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they would have like they had Police Academy in there. They had Bill and Ted. There was a Bill and Ted toy line that I never saw as a kid. There was, yeah. <clears throat> there was. Yeah, they had a lot of obscure stuff. He's right. Um, the police yeah, the police academy one was a totally different playset. Similar okay. but different. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, as far as slime with this thing being the only feature, I as a kid, I was not a fan of slime. Like Neither the toys with slime. I was like, I, what, not, I mean, usually you're if it if it's a bigger toy or any toy really, you're usually on the floor playing with it on carpet. As soon as that slime hits the carpet, it's it's nasty. You get little fibers in it, little you know. Yeah. I was never a fan of that. I was kind of a kind of a neat freak. Like I, I would play with my toys in the dirt, especially my GI Joes. But I would always bring them in, put them in the bathroom sink, <laughs> and then like scrub them down, clean them up. So slime never appealed to me as a kid. But, are you um, are you a, are you a neat freak now? Uh, yeah, I am. My wife would tell you. Like I have like I'm very organized. Everything has its place. If something's out of place, I'm like, where is it? Where's this thing I need? I left it right here. What'd you do with it? Yeah. What about you, Bobby? Yeah, I'm I'm like Ryan. I'm very organized. Um, you know, it's like at my office. Al shit almost to an organized. almost OCD level, maybe? Yes. Um, in, in a way, like I know like it's hard for me if, if I go to the office and things are slightly messy, like I can't really start working until it's it's kind of organized. Um, yep. you know, when I'm working on paint masters and doing the, you know, the putting together the resin figures, I make an awful mess and it drives me nuts. I remember when we had, uh, we had the guys at, you know, at, at the office when, when, you know, we were fill, filling, uh, Kickstarter orders, a uh, great group of guys worked really hard, but one guy, he was just uh, a little more messy than, than others and he's like you know like he would rip the, the backing off the the packing slip thing and instead of throwing it in the garbage can next to him you just throw it on the floor and he's like oh you know i at my workshop at home i this is how i do it and i was just like you don't do it like that here you know and uh yeah there's the there's the police academy one um, thanks to greg but, finstan for sending that in it looks similar so yeah um, so yeah, so I like, I like to keep it real organized. Um, you know, on, on Fridays I try to clean the office, you know, like the bathrooms and, you know, swift for the floors and vacuum and stuff. Um, but like is my, that why you told, is that why you told Sally he couldn't go to Taco Bell anymore before he <laughs> came to work? <laughs> Cause you clean the bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we destroy those bathrooms. Um, but it's, um, it's funny, you know, cause I, I just find that that kind of, People who've got who have that that trait naturally, where they they like to be organised, particularly with their stuff. Like they might not be organised with, um, you know, their weekly schedule or whatever, but they'll be organised with their possessions to an almost OCD level. It's a trait that leads you to becoming a collector. Yes, I agree. It, 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 it leads you to yeah. like needing to complete a set and having. You know, yeah. like even when I d display my stuff, I can't. My my action man display is almost in chronological order of release and mm -hmm. things like that. I when when I when I was living in the UK and I was in the um, in, in in the special forces in the army, um, I lived in this in this flat and I had a, a flat. There's a two bedroom apartment and I had a flatmate, and he had learned that I was really OCD about my dvds in the because we would share the living room like he wouldn't go in my room or stuff but um 
but like all the stuff in the living room was, was mine. Um, he just moved in with me later when I had a room available. So I had like a couple of big bookshelves covered in DVDs. And he'd figured out that I was really, really OCD about this. I could fly away to Africa for six weeks with the army. I would come back, I would walk in, and he would wait and see how long it took me to notice. And it, and it would sometimes be like 15 seconds. I'd be like, bro, why have you turned Empire Strikes back upside down? Yeah. Why, why is the writing going up the other way compared to all the other, you know, and <laughs> I was I was like that with the way my DVDs were laid out. So, yeah. Look, just to give you an idea of how organized I am and how particular I am with how things are and where I put things, I know I said, like, the heat gun was one of the favorite parts of my collection a couple weeks ago on this show. Really, it's not the heat gun. It's my label maker. Ooh. Okay? Because I have oh. all really? my Really? Does that mean I've got to change my avatar now? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not Next a Next week it'll be a label oh. maker. Yeah. Um, but I have all my figure accessories in these tackle boxes that I pick up at Walmart. Right? I have them all labeled. So that's my Mezco DC Batman villains. Right? All their accessories organized by figure. And these are organized. I have a lot of these. These are organized in a shelf to my left, which I can't show on camera because it won't turn that way. But I, I selected a shelf that fits five of these high per shelf, two wide, like exactly. Like I searched around for this stinking shelf and they're all labeled. That's how crazy I am. It's a sickness. It's not a sickness. It's how, how many it's, how many Valorous ones have you got? Two. So I got one one for weapons, and I got one for that was my heat gun, fell on the floor. I got one for weapons, and I got one for other accessories like hands, heads, backpacks, stuff like that. When Sal was at the office uh, this past week, I think on Monday or Tuesday, and I picked up some tackle boxes, and we went through all my my loose Action Force figures, and we just started putting all Condor hands and magazines and rifles and knives and stuff like that because I wanted to have all the gear uh, organized, you know, because we were just messing around making kind of customs and things like that, but. I have that kind of OCD. It's like, yeah. My, when I get my samples from China, each stage of each sample is in its own bin. You know, I need to get a label maker. But even like on my desktop on my computer, like my folders are super organized. Mm -hmm. I love spreadsheets. And like the yeah, my buddy at the factory, he was like, "Man, designers aren't usually this organized." And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know, man. I like I know like a lot of designers tend to be like just." just like chaos and messy. And I'm like, no man, like I can't work unless things are organized. It's really weird. Yep. yep. Yeah. I'm the same exact way. So before the chat jumps, I want to get to the super chat from scuba Pete. Thank you. Scuba very much. One of my favorite moderators, my favorite moderator personally, <laughs> scuba. Thank you. He says, great topic. I'm late, but this is a brilliant discussion. Well, thank you very much. Don't put me in that situation, Ryan. I was like, you're saying he's your favorite moderator. I can't choose between him and Timothy Ward and Michael Schaefer. And <laughs> oh, that's right, Tim Tim Ward and Michael. I like I too. Timothy Ward. Actually, he he was um, he was working overtime yesterday on the uh, the Band of Brothers stream. He did a fantastic job. So uh, big shout out to Tim Ward. Thank you for that. Yeah, I help mod your live streams, and Timothy is on top of things. Yep. Scuba has the best name. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, a world made of cardboard. Thank you once again. He says, I am still a neat freak, but 10 years in manufacturing, manufacturing estimation got me out of the everything has to be exact. Hmm. Maybe one day well, I'll be there, but I ain't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've, I've got a whole heap of these tubs, that are probably about that size. And I think I've got, eight of them now for, for Valiverse. So I've got one that is um, long weapons, like, you know, rifles, submachine guns. I've got another one that is for the pistols and the knives and the bladed weapons. I've got another one, which is an equipment tub, which has got spare backpacks and some of like the drop leg holsters and things. I've got a dedicated swarm one that's got the spare weapons from the gear packs and all the spare hands and 
Um, yeah, I've got a lot of them. <laughs> so we're all the same. We're all the same. Scuba, Scuba Pete wants to know if my label maker has a label. It will soon. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm going to label that um, thing. Label my heat gun. You know, uh, they're. What are you, you going to label your heat gun, Johnson? I'm going to call it Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. I love you, man. You know, um, there, there may be a, an action force item at the end of the year that may double as a storage for something. Ooh. Are you hey. doing like a 1960s wooden G.I. Joe foot locker for new action force with 50 cows and tripods and a weapons arsenal? I, I think wood is a little costly nowadays. I, I I didn't I didn't mean you're making it in wood. I'm saying the original GI Joe one was in wood. Yeah, but it's like it's um, like an army. Wooden toys. It's, it's going to be toys? some. It's, it's going to be some, and there might be a a whole heap of stuff inside of it. So, wow. Hey, little nice three PO nice exclusive little end of the year kind of Christmas item. I dig it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Um. So I. I want to get things back on track with play sets. Um, so there is the perception that there is a giant lack of play sets today. But I almost disagree a little bit. We already brought up Imagine X. Now, collector focus, I would say yes. There is a lack of play sets. But kid focused, they have massive play sets now. And not just Imagine X, which goes deep. Uh, you know the, DC. Paw, the Paw Patrol, yes. like Pup Tower, man, that thing is massive. massive. How about what? How about what Spin Master is doing? Have you seen that Spin Master Batcave? Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Like, it, mm -hmm. if I was a kid nowadays and I liked DC, like I did in the eighties and nineties, that Spin Master Batcave would be it. That thing is monstrous. Mm -hmm. Um, and then. Someone, I think it was Greg Finstad said on Facebook earlier, play sets went to the girls. You go down yeah. what I call the pink aisle, right? The doll aisle. There's massive play sets, man. He Bro. brought up the, uh, the the frozen tower castle or something. Yeah. Um, my niece was really into Bratz dolls when she was a kid. They had giant play sets. In fact, I, I have some of the Bratz vehicles because they scale great with six inch action figures they had like cadillacs and they had they had a bunch of stuff um they had a, like a, a stretch like suv limousine and they look great and they like i have two of the cadillacs they both have working radios hmm. they have a trunk that pops open plenty of room a lot of toy photographers will use that cadillac as like a, a gangster vehicle right but i mean the brats line had huge um huge play sets there was, uh, I think, Monster Squad had a giant, uh, some sort of castle playset or something. I don't know. And then, of course, Tony, your favorite guy, Todd McFarlane, put out a 66 Batcave. How about oh, that? <laughs> Which was really more of a out-of-scale backdrop. You've, you've, <laughs> why did you have to remind me of that? I think I, I that threw that thing in it. What I have I done with that thing? After that I watched, is a piece of garbage. After I watched your video, I actually went out and bought one, just because I, it <laughs> looks like this this weird like yeah. science lab. I want it in the back of my aim troopers with Modoc. I'm not using it for 66 Batman. Like I will buy stuff to work with other things because really that's to me that's not a playset. That's a diorama. It's just a uh, backdrop. Yeah. There, there's nothing playable about it, right? No play features. There's no trap doors like the, like the you know Castle Gray Skull. There's no working well, elevators like the, the Toy Biz Bat Cave. Well, there's a pair of bat poles that you can use for picking your nose or something. <laughs> right? Yeah, they're worthless, right? And then yeah. uh, even Hasbro now they still do, and we talked about it a little. They they do still do Star Wars play sets. But if you're a Patreon uh, a Patreon member of Retro Blasting, you would have seen him putting together that Han Solo playset that was like basically just cardboard. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah. So they were putting out cardboard play sets for a while. And then they got into the vintage collection play sets with the stairway to nowhere and the hallway. Which again... They've done, they've done more than that. They've done... Um, Jabba. Jabba, diorama. It's just the wall that he hangs with carbonite Han on. Um, aren't they coming out with one for the Mandalorian as well, which is often the, the last the episode bar. of the first season where they're in the bar. Yeah, it's the bar. And, yeah, and, and, and again, it's like, oh, you can you can buy two of them to make, turn it into, to have two walls rather than one. And um, right. di again, di dioramas again, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's they're, I think they put play set on the box, but they're not play sets for kids. I, mm -hmm. I can't imagine a kid would find any enjoyment from them. They they're shelf pieces. You put them on the shelf yeah. with your figures. Um, they're they're for adult collectors. So, in some ways, play sets have lasted. In in some ways, they've transitioned. And by the way, those Star Wars play sets are expensive. And for the most part, like the stairway to nowhere and the hallway. You get half a playset for fifty bucks. You, you get half a you get half a diorama. It's a lot. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys saw Talker Art's video. Shout out to Talker Art, but he bought a bunch of those hallways, and he he configured a a series of hallways on his shelf, and it actually looks pretty cool. And he got them all on clearance, but if he had paid full price, that would have been like three hundred bucks. What are they on yeah. clearance for? I think he said he picked them up on clearance for like half price. Okay. You know. So, but um, Bobby, being in the industry and working for major corporations, why have traditional play sets outside of like Imaginext? Why have they kind of disappeared? So, when I was at Hasbro, um. They, they, I was working on Spider-Man as soon as I got there in late 2012. And then I started working on Spider-Man for Amazing Spider-Man 2. And then I kept working on Spider-Man in 2014 and 15 when we were doing the animated series, uh, the Web Warriors animated series that had Iron Spider and Agent Venom. I loved working on Spider-Man. He was such a fun character. We did this line called Web Warriors. You you can show that again. And it was such a cool line because the figures had like spring-loaded arms and legs and you can put like these rubber webs on them and fling them. And that's why like they were called web slingers. You couldn't have got me a better picture than this? <laughs> Sorry, it's man. Tiny. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> it was the only one I found. So we were doing this great line. Now this was the animation that was on at the time. And Spider-Man was competing heavily against Ninja Turtles as far as, like, demographic. So, like, boys ages 4 to 7. And the Ninja Turtles line that, that Play School was putting out in from, like, 2012 to 2015 was fantastic. It was such a great line. And I told you guys they did that giant Turtles sewer playset. That thing was enormous, and it was, like, $200. They also did a bunch of small playsets. They did, like, zipline playsets. So... Like, for this line, I was like, yo, we should do a playset. However, the the guy who ran all of design, this kind of this dude, douchebag, <laughs> he, he's one of those guys where, like, he'll have an idea and he'll pitch it at a meeting. And then you know the idea is bad. And then you do the idea and the item doesn't sell. And he doesn't take any, any credit for it not selling. It's just like, oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, like advent calendars. Well, anyway, he when when the GI Joe Rise of Cobra movie came out, they did the pit playset. That thing was huge, absolutely massive, and it bombed. It bombed. They lost so much money on it. It was so expensive to tool. So he would always tell people, "No playsets. We're not doing playsets." So it wasn't an industry thing. It was a company thing, like. Hasbro was very against doing playsets and boys action. And you got to think that was 2000, what 2009 that, that pit playset came out. This was mm -hmm. 2014. 
So all that time, he wouldn't let play anyone do play sets. And we're kind of sitting there like, dude, Turtles is killing it with play sets. Killing it. So I remember like, all right, we're going to pitch a play set. And I wanted it to be like this shooting gallery. Because like you, had, you had these guys shooting webs. And I wanted it to be tons of targets, tons of features and actions and things that knock down and flip up and, you know, Total, totally something cool that a, a kid would, would get behind. And I remember like we started out as a $40 play set with no figure. Tons of features, made this cool concept model for it. And we, you know, we, we showed it to um, like retail. And retail was like, yeah, we want a figure. Like uh, it should come with a figure. Now, this is how dumb Hasbro sales people were at the time they had these these dummies running things instead of saying well now granted this is i think it was the, the target buyer the target buyer said we want a, a figure in in the in the you know in the play set and oh and we want it for 30 bucks now keep in mind the figures were 10 dollar figures so if you put a 10 dollar figure in a 30 dollar play set you really only have a 20 dollar play set so instead of the salesperson saying to the buyer, well, Turtles doesn't come with a figure, so we're not going to come with a figure. They said, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll have it come with a figure and we'll drop the price. The salespeople at Hasbro had no balls whatsoever. No balls to the, to the buyers at all. And I'm sitting there like, you just put a $10 figure in a $30 playset and now I'm going to, like this $40 awesome playset we have is going to be half of what it was. And I remember just like, why is nobody saying anything? And it's like, I couldn't say anything because designers were never allowed to talk in sales meetings. Mm -hmm. and I'm just sitting there like fuming, like dummy. What, what does Playmate say to this buyer? They stand up to that buyer. So um, we ended up having to redo the whole thing, cut costs like crazy. And I've always said that this is the worst item I've ever worked on. My entire career it has was the worst item ever, ever. And it should have been something cool because we finally were allowed to do a play set. And instead I, I gave this dog shit piece of plastic. It sucked. It absolutely sucked. And they did terrible marketing for it. And I think it flopped. I think it was a flop of an item. So then that was a bummer. And then I remember when I was working on the Avengers uh, Endgame line, you know, they were, they told us all about, oh, it's going to be time travel and this and that. And I created this model for, uh, you know, uh, for, for, to do time travel. It would have been a big, a big play set that almost looked kind of like a Ferris wheel where it was like you, you sent the figures to different locations and it had like secret doors, almost like the, the Batcave Bruce Wayne spinny thing. So mm -hmm. like you can bring different characters to Vormir or, uh, uh, what was Thanos' uh, homeworld? Um, Titan. Titan. Yeah. And it went to all these different things. And it was such a cool, innovative play set. And I remember we were in a meeting pitching it and that the guy who ran all of design, who hated play sets, was in there. And we were like, okay, we're going we're gonna to take you through the play set. He was like, no play sets. Didn't even let us show the model. He said, no play sets. Right there, the item was killed. Right oh, there. Man. So... That just goes to show you guys that you have companies that do play sets like crazy. And then, you know, you have Hasbro who just because of one person's feelings about stuff doesn't want to take the chance or anything like that. So why do you think Marvel never had play sets to this day? When was the last time Marvel had a play set? You know, yeah, Star Wars gets to do these play sets now, but that's very collector based. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to like Star Wars and collector, they're kind of allowed to do anything they want. Um, but you know, it's like, dude, we were trying to do a kid play set for the Avengers Endgame line. And it's like, this is Avengers Endgame, like a huge line that we knew was going to sell millions and millions of dollars. And he was just like, no play sets. Didn't even show his model. This model we spent thousands of dollars on. And it was like, how do you have that kind of mentality? It's the same mentality where, because they had this, this marketer there who had a bad taste in her mouth because she got burned on Rise of Cobra. She thought that we shouldn't be doing G.I. Joe product 
without entertainment. And that's why my classified line, which wasn't called classified line, got killed. And now she's no longer with the company. And look, they're doing a classified line without entertainment, and it's doing very, very well. So it's like you have these dummies that are in these higher up positions that have this skewed way of thinking, and it causes good items to not get made. And, you know, that's the sad part. So that's kind of why, like, yeah, like to you, to what you said, Ryan, play sets are thriving. Like companies are still doing it. It's just look who's not doing it. Mm-hmm. Hasbro Kid is not doing play sets. Yeah. Yeah. It, I've, I've, had a, a, I've had a few people this week um, after I put out the the video about, you know, like what I'm looking forward to with Series 2 of Action Force. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had a few people in the comments saying that um they don't trust me i'm i'm biased because i'm i'm in the line and i'm bobby's friend so i reckon i might go on ebay and buy one of these and review it (laughs) i was thinking the same thing i want to get one of these now it's so (laughs) bad i'm let me tell you something i was embarrassed of this item absolutely embarrassed it was it came i was so upset like to the point where i remember I remember like after we did it, I said to my boss, I'm like, I want to redo this. I I don't want this item to come out. He goes, we don't have the time. You can't redesign this thing. And I'm like, this is terrible. Like this is absolutely terrible. But literally when they cut the price down and put a figure in, like we had to go to tooling like fairly quickly. We had to get something done ASAP. And I remember like I had to whip something together in like an afternoon on what the features were and I, you know, tried to salvage some of what was in the, the original design, but man, it sucked, dude. It sucked. I don't even own one of these just because I didn't I didn't want it. Well, look at it this way. After this, you went and you made the Kingpin build a figure and <laughs> totally redeemed yourself. <laughs> so it's all good. Uh, um I do want to get to a super chat from our friend Jeremy. Thank you very much. He says the Sherwood Forest playset got a lot of use from me. I'm well aware that it was a reuse from Return of the Jedi, but I loved it nonetheless. I, I had will go out. It. I had I it. It was go, great. Uh, this might be controversial. I think it's better than the Ewok playset. It is because it has the, the foliage. Mm-hmm. It It's definitely better. Yeah. Uh, Tony, did, did you just wince when I said that? No, I just got a, a, a text message on my phone to say that my my next purchase of Battleverse Action Force has played custom, so I got excited. Oh, nice. um, I didn't I, I didn't win when you said that. I completely agree with you. It's superior to yeah. um, the, the Ewok Village. Yeah, the, yeah the, the, the Ewok Village looks like Endor after a hurricane's come through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, Bobby, I know you said it earlier, but I I think the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves line is massively underrated. A hundred percent, but it's still very affordable, which is good. If you yeah, want to collect it. yeah, it's Michael it's one of those like, lunch. it's one of those lines that you know everything is kind of getting hard to collect nowadays. But Robin Hood, Dick Tracy, even though the blank and in, in Dick Tracy, but like those two lines, like the figures are really really cheap to get. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an easy line to get. Yeah, I've always wanted to start collecting the shadow line for the similar. Oh, reasons. that's another so, easy one to get. I just yeah. I just bought another mail away hologram ring. I couldn't help myself. Nice. <laughs> um, and I think the Dick Tracy Playmates line is still pretty affordable. I have the cop car from. Yeah, that that's one. what I was saying. The Dick Tracy line, except the yeah. blank. You know, the blank the is blank. yeah, just absurd. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Um, so being that, I don't know about you guys. I don't really use play features on stuff. I prefer stuff not to have play features. Um, so now as an adult collector, I actually prefer the more diorama type of stuff, like the hallway, like the stairway to nowhere. Now I have no interest in those because I don't collect that scale. And I, I feel, especially with that stairway to nowhere, you kind of have to buy two, Mm -hmm. which makes it a, a very expensive purchase. But for me personally, play sets now, the way I collect now I do pretty much just want dioramas. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm 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 like strictly mm-hmm. a, a modern collector almost. Um, besides the very few items that I have, thank you, Tony, for the defender, the Rambo defender. 
love that thing. Um, what about you, They're Tony? They're getting harder and harder to find now. Huh? They're getting harder to find now. A lot of people are picking them up for six inch. Well, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think it was just me. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. But so, Tony, being that you are primarily a vintage collector and, and you like to collect the, the older play sets with the play features and stuff, more, you know, I, I would say almost purely kid focused. Mm -hmm. Now, today, what would you prefer to see on the store shelves as far as play sets go? One of one of my favorite play sets appeared in my or parts of it appeared in my review video of Valiverse Action Force Series One, and that is the Rambo Savage Strike Headquarters. That thing's got this giant watchtower. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it's got a trap door at the top of the watchtower that you know I've never used, um, but it's got a communications kind of corner hidden behind a corrugated um, wall. There's a communications layout. It's got ammo crates and barring like a winch on the on the top of the tower and the trap door, it doesn't really have play features. And I think a play set for Marvel Legends characters is actually really hard to come up with what it's going to be. Like oh, Batman's got a back cave, but. You know, the Avengers Tower, that's, to me, not very exciting thing for a playset. When it comes to Action Force or G.I. Joe Classifieds, I find that's a, you know, the military theme line, there is so much potential for sandbagged machine gun emplacements, um, tents oh, and... Well, I wouldn't necessarily say pillboxes because it's like, well, if, if it was a World War II line, mm -hmm. um, but a watchtower, we're going in, in a watchtower, it could come with alternate weapons and that's kind of your your play feature, you know, swapping out your, your different weapons. And to me, it can be used in a in a diorama, but it's not, it's not a diorama. You know, a diorama has a backdrop to it, you know. Sure. Um, I do like a lot. I've been looking around at a lot of these these cardboard ones that have that are for sale. Um, you know, for for use in videos with, with six inch. But I actually prefer to, as you saw in that Action Force video, I've took a tent from the Action Man line. I took some tree looking things out of my fish tank. I took parts of the Savage Strike headquarter, and I just build my own little um, diorama. That's sort of something I did as a as a kid, but um, I don't know if I'm dropping enough hints here or not, but um, <laughs> yeah. um, I, I need, so I need like a, a little, a little basher. I want, I want a Mark 19 grenade launcher on a tripod surrounded by sandbags with an ammo can in the action force line. So I literally, I, don't want much more, Bobby. I literally just bought one on eBay just now. I just bought the Rambo playset, just because I I need it. I need it, and I think it's a good test to see the size. And you know, I think something like that is is, is good for what could be done for Action Force. Um, so yeah, awesome. Is is, is it complete? What you've got? Uh, it's missing one part. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay with it. It's, I'm okay with it's it. It's good. You'll like it. I just I just put it in, a, in an offer. If he accepts the offer, great. If not, I'll just buy it for what the listing price is. Yeah. But I needed it. Yeah, you, you'll like right it because there's, um, there's a weapons crate that comes with six AK-47s in it, and mm -hmm. then there's a slightly bigger crate that comes with five or six M60s. And you see them in so many of my videos because those crates are literally – perfectly scaled to these guys and you put one on top of the other and it's like waist height. So if you want to um, display parts of the, the figure, I think when I was showing the examples, all the different hands, I just put two crates in front of the guy. Then you can see the hands he's got and the, all the others are like laid out on the crate. And you know, yeah. you know what I feel like that place that's missing that I might put in action force one, a cardboard backdrop. Mm. 
maybe with some vehicles in the background to give it some depth, you know, but I do, you know what I'm going to, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to measure the width of the action force vehicle that we're working on right now to make sure that it has a place that could, it could fit in the di the diorama. Sal says, don't lie, Bobby. You bought it so that you and I can play with it. 100%, dude. Come on. Oh, sounds like a play date at Valiverse Come headquarters. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Tony, you mentioned you have some fish tank items. Yeah. For me, for me, the best place at aisle at like Walmart is their fish tank accessory aisle. Or after Christmas when all their Christmas decorations go on sale, there's a lot of good stuff in that aisle. You can get on clearance trees, um, like little lamp posts and stuff for people to build their Christmas, you know, displays with a lot of good stuff in there to, you know, to, to build out a world. Um, we did get a super chat, another one from a world made of cardboard. Thank you very much. He Again, says, I have all yeah, he says, I have always believed that play sets and vehicles help immerse the child in the universe of the toy line. They are essential in building imaginations. 100% agree. That my Batcave playset, and now that I've remembered it tonight, that Sesame Street playset were like, that was it. That was my world. Batman would go from the Batcave to Gotham City. That was world building as a kid. Yep. Yeah, for, for me, man, that – how many a action movies of the 80s have you seen where the guys have got to, like, sneak past the military checkpoint or something? Checkpoint Alpha in the G.I. Joe line, right? You've got you've got the um, the, swing, the swinging gate. There's a speed bump. But then you've got you know, the guy in the bottom of the tower. He has a clipboard. You can have a guy on the top of the tower. There's – a spotlight, a cannon, there's a ladder going up. It's a tiny little playset with so much going on. I loved that thing when I was a kid. Loved it. Yeah. And my character, yeah, and it was it was that world building because my characters, it would be, you know, coming up with all these different ways of how they could either take out the guards and charge through or how they could sneak past without the guards seeing them and loved it. Michael on Retro Blasting has a great video about playsets. And he mentions this little blanket that he had. And he would bunch that thing up and throw it on the floor. And man, did that take me back. Because yeah. my mom had a throw rug that I would do the same thing. I'd bunch yep. it up, kind of throw it on the floor. There would be trenches, right, cliffs and stuff. And like that blanket, along with some handmade blocks, wooden blocks that my grandfather had made, I would I would build you know in, entire scenes out of that. I'd have like an enemy base, you know the hero base, and you know the figures would would fight in the middle on that blanket. Um, so I mean, you, you know, as we're going into the aquarium aisle, into the uh, the Christmas clearance section, that's kind of that modern day blanket and wooden blocks. Mm -hmm. I had to pull Mars. this coming up here. <laughs> We was talking about doing, you know, maybe doing something like the Rambo playset for Action Fort with a cardboard backdrop. That'd be awesome. You could get these different exclusive backdrops for your Action Force points. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. also make it. You got to make that backdrop two sided so you could flip it. So one could be the swarm, one could be Action mm -hmm. Force or the garrison in Action Force. No, you could have day time, night time, or yeah, yeah. Action um, Force. Action Force isn't four and up either, so you could throw in some dead bodies in that mm -hmm. on that cardboard mm -hmm. backdrop, some blood, you know, just build sure. out this crazy violent scene. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, you know, I just realized a couple playsets we didn't talk about that were very awesome playsets were the Indiana Jones Kenner playsets. The Well of the Souls playset is Well of the Souls. Small, but it is beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, yeah. It's the only way to get the Ark of the Covenant in that in that line, and it's black metalized gold, stunning. I mean, there's a lot of places we could have talked about. Yeah, yeah. If this was a comprehensive list of every place that this would be a 24 hour show. Sure. <laughs> mm. um, Jeremy Jernigan, man, you guys are too generous. Thank you once again. He says, 
Another overlooked playset is Fort Carrium from the Marshall Brave Star. Yeah, well, yeah. that Brave Star line, man, that's a that's an expensive line. So I think mm-hmm. it was kind of one of those things where it was like one of those rare lines that didn't do well. And lines that really don't do well tend to be more rare on the secondary market nowadays. Kind of like that that Remco Karate Kid line mm-hmm. uh, with that dojo. But yeah, I know I know the place that he's talking about. That Brave Star line has some really rare stuff. Yeah, you know, those smaller lines, they had a lot of competition in the toy aisle, and that's probably mm-hmm. why they got overlooked, you know? I mean, if mm-hmm. you're a kid in that era, are you going to get Grayskull or the, the Brave Star playset, you know? Yeah. I think uh, Grayskull might win out. Um, he also said he never had one, but his buddy down the street did. It was an amazing item. Thank you, Jeremy. And then another one from World Made of Cardboard. Thank you. He says, could modular components work to make play sets for larger figures? Absolutely. I, I have a few. Um, the uh, I think it's um, Nova Revol. It's it's basically like, well, it, it's a modular play set. It has working lights, but you can build it kind of any way you want. It's almost like Legos. It's almost like a Lego set. With bigger pieces, they snap together. It's very modular. You can build tunnels, backdrops. It's, it has a very sci-fi look to it, um, almost like Alien, something from the Alien movies. Um, and then there's the FEX system, which has lots of different options. You can get subways. You can get um, you can get Death Star walls. You can get uh, all kinds of stuff. And that also is very modular. It's small pieces that you snap together however you want, kind of like Lego, and you build out your, your diorama, your scene. So that's absolutely an option. And a friend of ours, Brian Rowland, he's working on a modular, um, 3D printed modular uh, diorama or playset type of thing. Is that the guy who made the, those, those shields that you were showing me the pictures of earlier? Yes. Yeah, they, uh, they look awesome, man. Yeah, the, the SWAT team shield. So I, I, I'm i getting four of them from him, so I'll I'll definitely send you guys a couple. Um, and then we got one from Unboxing Art. Thank you. He's got a lot of good uh, Action Force reviews on his channel. Yeah. He says, a lot of us have custom play sets. We call them dios because I guess we're adults. Love playing outside with figures, making stick fences and trenches. Yeah, man. I think I talked about it on this show. My parents had a an atrium off the side of their house with dirt planters. And that's, man, I would dig in that dirt and there was big rocks and I would build out these whole scenes with my Joes as a kid. Love that. And we got one from Skydrill Walker. Thank you very much. He says, save 15% at extreme sets when you use the code Skydrill. Thanks, man. Extreme sets are the ones that do the cardboard backdrops. Yeah. So S K Y D R O fifteen percent off, and you know, I know it's just cardboard, but as far as if you want dios, extreme sets is a a relatively inexpensive way to go. Yep. And they have a lot of options. Thank you, Skydrill Walker. And we're all caught up on super chats. So, um. I think we we covered everything. I think we can yeah, probably wrap this up. I, I, I kind of get a feeling this is a, t- a topic we can revisit in, in the oh, future. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. um, before we do head off, are we doing a show next week? Because we can. Isn't it, isn't it Toy Fair or something this week? No, Toy Fair is canceled. But you know all, all the. Um, all the toy companies will do like their own thing. They'll do their own reveals and stuff in lieu of not mystery? having a. I don't think so. It's usually okay. towards the end of February. Ah, uh, okay, all right, all good. But our I, our I, next I got, I got being that our next scheduled show is the twelfth, I will not be in town. I will be in the Bahamas. Nice. <laughs> um. We can do a show next week if you guys want. Well, um, we'll, we we'll chat amongst about. ourselves before we tell the audience. <laughs> okay. Uh, after I'll give everyone updated. So, we, if if we miss the twelfth, maybe we'll do the fifth of February. 
we will be back on the 26th with a guest, Jeff Hicks from WCBS. Nice. And the 26th into February, we'll have plenty to talk about as far as modern toys go. So I think that's going to be our topic. There's going to be a lot of reveals because it's toy fair season, even though there's no in-person toy fair this year. So we're going to kind of look at all the the reveals of, of modern stuff coming out and you know, we only bash and trash stuff here, so that's what we'll do. We'll just talk about how horrible everything is, and we'll be very negative about it. And you know, yeah. people will be very upset with us, and they'll watch the show anyway. Who canceled Toy Fair? <laughs> What's that? Who canceled Toy Fair? Uh, the Toy Fair people, because of there's some sort of uh, cold circulating around that I yeah, had two I weeks ago. I don't want to say the word because I guess they they demonetize you or something. I don't know. Really? You get demonetized for saying that? Well, you know, the beer bug, the coof. The, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I know why, but um, yeah. I was it's just... Mega, Megatron. The Megatron <laughs> variant. Yes, the Megatron variant. I, I, I was just thinking, you know, I, I, can't, I, can't see, I can't see Hasbro doing Toy Fair when... As a, as, a, as a physical fair, it's really hard to show digital renders. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's good. Well, Bobby, the last few years, what, what, you know, when Toy Fair was in person, yeah. I don't think Hasbro was there. They were doing like Hasbro, their own off-site so, thing. Toy, toy Fair is held at a big convention center. Mm. But Hasbro was always like very like, like, I don't know, like cocky about it. And they, they, they weren't in – the convention center they had they rented out like their own room like a couple miles away like it was really stupid i was like why would you not be where everyone is you make other like all the buyers and sales people come to like your other location because you want to be like you know who the fuck you are kind of and like oh look we have our own place it's like dude everyone's there you're not you're not that special that you need to be somewhere else uh, i always thought it was stupid because I would want to walk the floor when I would go to Toy Fair. I'd want to see what other companies were doing. But it's like we were stuck at this other location, you know. So it's just annoying. And then getting through New York City, it's like it's just it was just a pain in the ass. But you know, I remember like me and Ryan Ting, we would we would do um, you know our reveals and stuff um, in in like this upper room. They would always rent out this this these swanky places. It was it was stupid. Um, yeah. But you know, yeah, they, they would have we, the... we would show stuff. The thing with Toy Fair is what they'll do is they have like um they have like reveals like at night, and then like the next day they have like all the the press people there, and you kind of go through stuff. I, that was how it was uh, when I was there. Um, they might do it differently now, but well, they'll definitely know. do their not live live streams. This yeah. Week. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll we'll have plenty to talk about legends, classified, um, Power Rangers, uh, more Haslabs like probably. Yeah, we might see a, a Haslab. Yeah, good point. Yeah, um, Commando's new ship. Before we wrap wrap it up, this would not be an analog toys live stream without a super chat from Brian Dillingham. Thank you very much, as always. And be very careful, right? Because Michael did a Patreon exclusive live stream on Retro Blasting earlier today. And all he tried to do was pull Brian's comment up on the screen and he blocked him from the channel instead. <laughs> and, oh, he, no. and he was like freaking out trying to undo it. So, uh, um, so but uh, Brian doesn't need to write a comment. His comment is, please don't ban me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. All right. So we're going to talk amongst ourselves after the show. Maybe we'll do a show next Saturday in lieu of the 12th, but we will definitely be back on the 26th with Jeff Hicks from World Class Bullshitters. Should be a great show. I, I love that channel. Jeff's a great guy. Met him in person at Star Wars Celebration a couple years ago. Super nice guy. Really smart. He knows his stuff. I It's going to be a great show. Yeah. So that looking will be February. What's that? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Uh, that will be February 26th once again. So, Tony, where can everyone find you? Where can they follow you online? They already know, but let's just get through it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to end this podcast by saying that the pre-orders for Valiverse Series 2 were closing at 9 p.m. on 
uh, that's 9 p.m. Eastern on Friday, the 4th of February. Um, got a lot of people are, uh, are frustrated that they missed out on this line the, the first time because they, they, you know, they didn't know about it or they were waiting to see if it was good. And then it sold out in, in quick succession. Not, not as fast as Hasbro, like, you know, all of their pre-orders for a new figure selling out in 47 seconds or whatever. Um, but yeah, guys, don't, you know, if you're interested in the line, you want to get it, you, you need to back the pre-order because um, you never know what's going to happen later on. Exactly. Exactly. And Bobby, where can everyone follow you? And when is Big Bad Toy Store shipping Action Force product? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. I only see that like 50 times a day after I've given the same answer about a thousand times. Uh, already uh i don't control when they're getting theirs they use their own carrier that shipped directly from the factory a while ago i do not control what they do but um you know they have a generic message that goes up that says you know the, um something about blaming the manufacturer or something like that but no their their shipment went out uh they just took the slow boat i paid for the you know the quick one so big bad is great they're a great, great partner, but when you order from Valibris, you're always going to get your stuff first. And you can follow Bobby on Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, yep. at Valibris. Yep. Everywhere. Valibris everywhere, baby. And stay tuned to his channel because that's where you do all your uh, new reveals. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be uh, doing way more with the, the YouTube channel. Um, lots of, of new content coming. Uh, I was talking with some with a, a 3D animator about doing some new stuff. So we got a lot of a lot of stakes in the fire. Lots of lots of stuff happening. Very big cool. news, big new stuff coming, like huge new stuff coming. So it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Um and before we close it out, oh well you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at laserpants81. And I co-host the Infinity Equation podcast Friday nights, 5 p.m. Pacific on the Infinity Equation channel on YouTube. And we have one more super chat to get to. Thank you very much, Matt Talon. He says, instead of the Build-A-Figure, maybe Build-A-Diorama could be a concept. I don't see why not. We, it would we, be it a small It was something I, I looked into it when I was at Hasbro. It was something we were, we were contemplating. Especially if you're just building like a wall, like a backdrop. Mm -hmm. You know, that. I, I, yeah, I think that's doable. That, that would be cool. So thank you, everyone. Um, we will see you maybe next week, definitely on the 26th. And until next time, later. See you guys.